What's your name if I can ask? My name is Casey Siegel. Casey Siegel? Casey, would it be all right for you? We're with Nightly News. We're trying to pull together just some reaction from people who worked around him. I know right. nobody, nobody really knew him well, but I'd like to talk to just a few people who know him. You know, knew of him, at least. I'll ask you to spell Casey Ziegel to make sure I don't get that screwed up. Right. You want to give the wife a call, it's a good chance this will be on the NBC Nightly News. Uh, I give a, right. Uh, at about 7 o'clock here in New York City. You might be interested. What channel is that? Channel 4. What do you mean, what channel is that? Come on. <laughs> Ready? Go ahead. Ziegel? Yes. Spell Casey Ziegel. K-A-S-S-E-Z-E-G-E-L. K-A-S-S-E-Z-E-G-E-L. Thank you. Mr. Ziegel, what kind of, of man was Mr. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Berkowitz. Berkowitz, I'm sorry. Well, please don't stand behind me there, babe. What kind of man was Mr. Berkowitz? Uh, Mr. Berkowitz was a uh, more or less of a quiet, reserved uh, person. He seemed to be a good worker, did his job well. And uh, nothing like uh, the reports that I, that I hear about him being quarrelsome or angry or anything. What was your reaction? What was your reaction when you first heard that uh, this well, guy was more than likely the son of Sam? Well, last night I heard over the radio a report, and uh, that it, when they gave his name, I, it didn't jive until uh, I heard that he was a postal employee, and uh, I was just dumbfounded, just dumbfounded, speechless, because uh, I had no suspicions whatsoever. No suspicions whatsoever. What did he do on? Did he do anything on the job that would uh, lead you to believe a guy could have that sort Nothing. of thing? No, no arguments or temper or raising his voice or anything like that. He Not worked well with people. Yes, it seemed to work all right with people. It's. Uh, you ever hear any complaints about him? No. So what's your, as you reflect on all of this now, what's your, what's your feeling? It's just a, it's a sad, sad day. And I'm glad that they've got him, finally. It's just, un, just unfortunate. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a terrible day. Mr. Ziegel, thank you very much. I thank you very much. That. Yes, sir. Let me make one picture over your shoulder here, just in case we might need a... Just talk to me, please. Right. Look at him and just talk. Tell me, uh, uh, tell me one more, we're not recording. Uh, what do you think of this guy, uh, Son of Sam? Oh, as I said, he was a quiet, reserved person. More or less kept to himself. Uh, it's just uh, the whole thing is really it's shocked. It's speechless. It's really it's sad. It's really sad. All right. We're on the other side, right? For the other dude? Yeah, we're on the other side. All right. Get the Speed, thing. please. I want to slate this. Huh? Do we need a No, you can stand if you want to. You can't stand back there. You can't stand back there. Gerald Harrington is speaking with Frank Elliott. Mike Elliott. Make that Mike Elliott. M I K E E L L I O T. Two T's. E L L I O T T. Mike Elliott. Two T's. Two L's. Two T's. Mike, how did you know? Uh... Well, when I, he first started working here, it was about six months ago, the uh, foreman told me to break them in and show them what to do on uh, you know processing the mail on the collection and uh, we worked together for about two or three months and like we sat and had coffee together and he he, he did a lot of you know talk mostly about he liked to go fishing and uh, he did a lot of reading he liked to read not, I think mostly novels you know and uh, the only thing he ever said about the son of Sam was that uh, he, he advised one girl to put her hair up in a bun that she shouldn't wear long hair because that's what son of Sam was after girls with long hair you know brown long brown hair and that's about it he actually advised one of the girls he was working with right. that she should wear her hair up right he told her to wear her hair up that Sam is going after girls with long hair you know, long brown hair yes he told this to the girl uh, her name is Teresa Graciano did he ever say Y'all gonna have to stand back, please, please. Did he ever, uh, did he ever say or do anything that uh, led you to be a little suspicious or at least wonder kind of where or what what he's all about? Or? 
No, he never spoke about his uh, time before the post office. He never did any talking about his uh, home life or anything. The only thing he spoke about was his job. He says he hopes he could ha make it, you know, the training and everything, and that he likes working here in the post office. That's the only thing. You know. What about girls? After all, he was 24 years old. Well, he had uh, spoken a couple of times. He had, uh, saw a couple of girls pass by that worked in the post office. He said they were good-looking girls, you know, but that's about as far as he would talk about girls, you know. You ever seen him with a girl? The only girl that I saw him with was this Teresa Graciano, you know. Yeah. Socially, I mean. You ever see him with a girl? No. no. Only, you know, on the coffee break, we'd be, you know, he'd be sitting with and talking with the girl, you know. And I, I, that I, I don't know what they talked about or anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to do this one little more time over again. Just forget like, that did, pretend like that didn't happen once, okay? I don't want to ask hear you. Yeah. Okay, we're all right. We're all, all right. right. Tell, tell me, what do you know about uh, David Bergowitz and uh, what your relationship was and all like that? Well, when he first started working for the post office, the uh, f foreman told me to break him in and show him uh, the breakdown of the mail, the processing of the collection. And, like, we, we worked together for about three months. He worked in my section. And he was a good worker. He was quiet, you know. He used to go to coffee together, and he would discuss uh, about he liked fish. Uh, Frank Elliott, F R. Mike. I'm sorry, Mike Elliott, M I A M I K E E L L I O T T. Mike Elliott, two L's, two T's. Tell me what you knew about David Bergowitz. Well, I didn't know much about him th before he had come to the post office. All he, you know, I knew about that he told me he liked to go fishing. He liked to read a lot of books, and uh, that's about, you know. Did he seem strange, weird? Uh, did he seem at all? Uh, no, he didn't. He he seemed calm, cool, and collective all the, all the time when we were working. He did the job, what he had to do. When it was time for his break, he went on a break. We you know we we discussed things that he liked to do, and that's about it. Were you, what was your reaction when you when you learned that uh, David well, Bergowitz was perhaps the son of Sam? Yeah, well, I saw his paper, uh, his uh, picture on the Daily News, the final edition. And they didn't say anything about the Bronx Post Office. They just said that he worked for the Post Office. And when I saw the face, I said, I know him from somewhere, but I, I didn't place the Post Office. I said, I seen him somewhere in the Bronx. But then when the Post came out and they said the Bronx Post Office, then I said, I said, that's the guy. I work with the guy. And I, I, I broke the man in when he first started working for the Post Office. And on all that time, you didn't notice that uh, there was anything strange or different about this fellow? No. Nothing whatsoever, nothing different, no. Just he came in, he did his work, and he went home. He had, he used to like to eat hero sandwiches. And go, he went out on his break to buy sandwiches, come back, and he'd sit down. But most of the time, like, he did sit by himself. For like, the first couple of months, he sat with me. But after that, he stayed in the corner by himself with his books, reading. He was, looked like he was always deep in, in, into the books. He looked like a very studious person. And I was really shocked to, you know, to know that he was the guy. Uh, it's very hard to believe. Bring it, cut away. Believe it. First, he's trying to talk you out of it, right? Uh, let's let's do this. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Come Tell on. me one more time. What? Well, how did you know this guy? Well, when he started working for the post office, he had they put him in my section. Talk to where, me. Look at me. When, I, when he was working in my, he worked in my section when he first started working in the post office. And I broke him in. The uh, foreman told me to show him the breakdown on the collection. You know, the mail coming into the post office from all areas of the Bronx. And like he was. Got it. That's okay. I just need about five seconds of this. Okay, tell me one more time. Uh, how'd you, how, you know, what you, what you thought about this guy? Okay, come on. Well, I, I thought he was a quiet guy. I, I wouldn't, I never would Look think, I would never think in a million years that this guy is uh, son of Sam. Like, he was always so quiet. He did his work. He, he came to work. He had his breaks. He would sit down. And sit, he sat with me the first couple of months of training while I was showing him what to do. But after that, he broke away and he sat in a corner reading books. And that's about it. He, like, he would see me in the, in the hallway. He would nod to me. But that's about it. John Deal, whose girlfriend, Christine Freund, was murdered in January, said the arrest was good news for everybody. I feel very, very good about it, that uh, everybody can, be, can walk, you know, or go out with their dates safe again now, you know. Some of us had to, uh, you know, suffer through this. At the Brooklyn home of Stacy Moskowitz, the last person murdered, her mother praised the police, but added that the family's life will never be the same. It's a very difficult thing to resume anything normal afterward.
as far as I'm concerned anyway. You just can't pick up uh, nothing pieces when there's no pieces to pick up. New Yorkers saw the arrest as a release for New York's young women and their parents. I was getting a little worried since I have short, short length brown hair and everything. But now I feel much, much better. Oh, I feel much safer walking the streets of New York. <laughs> much safer, you know, I can go out at night and go to the discotheques and just feel better about it. I don't have to worry that my parents were very worried that I couldn't go out at night. I was always home, went to sleep early. I think it's great. Now I feel so much safer about going out at night. I'm very happy. I have daughters. So after almost a year of tension and fear, this city's young people and their parents are beginning to relax. Lee McCarthy, NBC News, New York. This is the man police believe to be the son of Sam, the 44 caliber killer who has killed six and wounded seven in a string of attacks over the last 13 months. He was arrested outside his apartment in Yonkers, New York at 10.30 last night and brought to police headquarters about midnight. He is David Berkowitz, a 24-year-old postal worker who lived alone. He was smiling as he was brought in. Detectives displayed a 44 caliber pistol found in Berkowitz's car. The police lab says its tests indicate this was the gun used in the most recent Son of Sam slaying. Uh, ballistics section has just called and told us that the uh, 44 caliber gun recovered tonight has been tested and the bullets match the bullets recovered from Stacey Moskowitz. New York's Mayor Beam appeared after midnight. I'm very pleased to announce that the people of the city of New York can rest easy this morning because of the fact that the police have captured a man whom they believe to be the son of Sam. It was Berkowitz's car that led police to him. It had been ticketed for being parked by a fire hydrant on the night of the most recent murder, just a few blocks from the murder scene. Routinely following up the ticket, police found the car in Yonkers and noticed a 45 caliber machine gun inside and an envelope addressed in the killer's style of handwriting. He was uh, apprehended. He was advised of his rights. Any resistance? Advised that he was uh, under arrest, advised of his rights. No, he was, uh, he was re resigned to uh, what appeared to be his fate. Did he make any he made admissions? A, he made a statement along, well, you got me. 